this is a TPM module. So if you've done your research, you've probably guessed that you're going to need one of these when Windows 11 comes out. Well, kind of. You see, the modules are definitely very useful because they provide more security. Technically, a physical module like this is more secure because when you activate TPM on a system, what you're doing is storing part of the key on here rather than in the firmware of your BIOS. What that means is when hackers try to hack your machine, it's harder to get the rest of the key because it's stored on this separate device. Now, what you can do is enable TPM just through your BIOS. This is available on most AMD and Intel systems after about the years of 2012. There's an official list released by Microsoft which tells you exactly what CPUs will be compatible with Windows 11. I'll put a link to those below, and that's a list for the Intel CPUs and for the AMD CPUs. So the main purpose of today's video is we're going to be looking at how to enable TPM in Gigabyte motherboards. We're going to be doing this on an Intel-based motherboard and an AMD-based motherboard, and we're also going to be plugging this TPM chip into the AMD-based motherboard just to see how that differs from having integrated TPM. So the first step before heading into any of our BIOSes, we're going to check that TPM isn't already enabled. This works on the AMD and an Intel system as it's just from Windows and we're checking if TPM is enabled or not. The way we do that is we're going to do the Windows R command to open our run box and right from there we're going to type in tpm.msc and press OK. So on this system, for example, it tells me that compatible TPM cannot be found, so I know it's not enabled. Let's head into the BIOS of this AMD system and find out how to enable TPM. So to head into the BIOS, what we're going to have to do is turn the PC off and push the power button and start pressing the delete key on your keyboard. And what you'll see in a minute is a flash screen telling us to press the delete key to get into the BIOS. So you'll see that right there, it just flashed and that enables the BIOS. To enable TPM in a Gigabyte BIOS and an AMD CPU based system, work out whether you're in easy mode or in advanced mode. Uh, because if we go into easy mode, then we need to get into advanced mode. All right. So we're going to go into advanced mode by pressing F2. And then we're going to head over to settings just at the top of the screen here. Then we're going to go down to miscellaneous. And then in here, we're going to find AMD CPU FTPM. So at the moment, that says it is disabled. Before we enable FTPM, trusted computing, that is where we find settings for TPM once it's enabled. So at the moment, when we open this, we don't have any settings to choose from because FTPM isn't currently enabled on this AMD system. What I'm going to do is go to the AMD FTPM setting and enable it. We're going to press F10 on our keyboard and we're going to press yes to restart. As we're restarting the system, we're going to continue to press delete because we want to boot back into the BIOS to check that TPM has now been enabled. So as the system starts up, we're going to keep tapping the delete key going to prompt us with the flash screen again and we can get back into the BIOS. Now when we head over to settings and go down to miscellaneous and now this time when we click on trusted computing we have all our settings to choose from for TPM. Before we move over to the Intel based system what I'm going to do is use the TPM module on this AMD system as we have a TPM socket on this motherboard and we're going to see how that differs from using the integrated TPM. We're just going to see if there's any difference in settings and we'll be able to find out how to do it too. The motherboard in the AMD system is a B550 Aorus Elite AX V2. If you have a look at this schematic here, you can see on the bottom left corner of the motherboard where the TPM socket is. On the actual TPM chip, what you'll find is that there is one of the pins that is blocked off. Now that is to make it easier so that when you plug the chip into the motherboard, you can only put it in one way. So I'm going to fit this to the system now and we will see how that affects the settings. Now that the TPM module is installed, we've got one more step just to make sure that that module is activated. At the moment, when we look at the BIOS, we still have AMD CPU TPM enabled. 
So if we have a look at trusted computing, what's going to happen is the vendor is still going to be set to AMD. What we need to do is ensure that the AMD CPU TPM is disabled, just like this. We're going to press F10, save and exit, and press yes. Once we load back into the BIOS, it will pick up the physical TPM that we've installed into the machine instead of the AMD version of the TPM. So again, we're going to press delete on the keyboard until the system boots back up. So once we load into the BIOS, go back to settings, go back to miscellaneous, we can see the AMD CPU TPM is disabled. Now originally, when we looked in Trusted Computing, there was no settings available, but with the installed hardware TPM, we now have settings here. And as you can see, the main key giveaway is the vendor name is no longer AMD. We're using IPX instead. Technically, it appears as if there's not really much of a difference between the software and the hardware TPM. Just remember, like we mentioned at the beginning, that by having a physical hardware TPM, it's restricting hackers from actually accessing that TPM. So it's applying another level of hardware that a hacker would have to get through to try and get into your data. Let's now move on to the Intel-based system and see how that differs from the AMD. With an Intel-based system, it's very similar to using the AMD-based system in regards to booting into the BIOS. We're going to do the exact same thing as the AMD system. We're going to push the power button and we're going to immediately start pressing the delete key and that will get us into the BIOS. I've just turned on the machine. As you can see, the flash screen pops up. I'm gonna press the delete key on my keyboard. So we get the flash screen a bit longer on here, but that's why you wanna keep tapping the delete key because sometimes the flash screens only appear for a couple of seconds. Um, therefore, you can easily miss it if you're not um, constantly tapping the delete key. So in the Intel-based system, again, we're gonna make sure that we are not in easy mode. So we're gonna press F2 to head into advanced mode. We're gonna go over to peripherals and we're going to look for Intel Platform Trust Technology, or PTT. At the moment, it's disabled. If we go and have a look at trusted computing, same again as the AMD-based system, we've got no settings there because we haven't enabled it yet in the software. So what we're gonna do is go back a step. We're going to go to Intel Platform Trust Technology and press Enabled. If we look in trusted computing, we still don't get the settings after enabling it. What we have to do is F10, save configuration and exit. That will restart the computer. And you wanna keep pressing delete again as soon as you restart the machine. So we've loaded back into the BIOS for this Intel-based system. What we're going to do is head over to peripherals. We're gonna click on trusted computing and we can now see all our settings available for this Intel system. Just before we finish up, we're gonna head back into Windows and we're gonna check that the TPM has been enabled in Windows as well. We're back into Windows. We're going to run that command one more time. It's already there saved from earlier. tpm.msc, press okay. And as you can see now, TPM management on the local computer is enabled. We've got version two on here as well. So that is perfect for upgrading the system to Windows 11. So that is gonna round it up for today's video. If this has solved your problem getting TPM enabled on an Intel or an AMD BIOS, make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to turn the bell icon on so you get updates as to when we release new videos. And hit subscribe because we're gonna be releasing loads more tips and tricks videos on the run up to Windows 11, so you don't wanna miss out on those. Without any further ado, I'll see you in the next video.